yo, I figured I'd come on here a little bit early, go over some of these people's work, let people get, you know, come and hang out. It's going to be chill. It's going to be a good good one today. And, um, yeah, what's up? Friends. Um, Connor, are we here? Are you here, Connor? I feel like you're my cheerleader. Like, I feel like every time I go live, I look forward to you being here. So I hope you're here today. And if you're not, that's cool, too. Um, yes, Connor, my guy. What up? How are you? Let people come, come hang out. We're good. We are good. Everything looking with the stream? What do you think? I got in a little bit later than planned, but you know. What up, Odin? Good morning. Aren't you like, where are you at again? Alright, cool. What up, Sydney? Welcome. We got the we got the usual specs, suspects, Sydney. How's it going? Uh, yes. What up, guys? Yo, I figure out I'm gonna go over some of these people's work. Connor, if you wanna if you wanna throw all the links in the in the chat, I know you got it up, but if you wanna throw them in there and just let people kind of see it, that'd be great. There we go. There we go. There we go. What's up, Marissa? How's it going, friends? Happy uh, Thursday. <laughs> What's a good girl? I can just picture you saying that in real life. Let me throw a tweet really fast. It says we're live. And then we'll get... I'll do like a one-minute walkthrough of each of these people's sites real fast. We are live. Twitch.tv slash Matthias. Maddie, yes, everyone's here. Okay, cool. So, before everybody gets here, um, I just want to show you guys some of their work. We've got Ed Mason tonight, who is awesome. I met Ed on tour in Europe like four years ago. And his stuff is like pretty sweet, actually. He works with architects a lot. And I love architects, and I was looking at um, just like super... His stuff is so, it feels like quiet yet energetic all the time. Like everything is so beautiful and classic looking. So if you have a chance, check out his work. He uh, reminds me a lot of film, even though sometimes it might not be film. But I thought that was cool. What's up, a blue fox? And really? Yeah, Maddie, we got John in here. We got Peter, who is one of the only people here who I have, actually the only one I haven't met, but we talked on, or Peter shoots specifically told me to work with the script for 10 years but some massive shows over in the UK and it's pretty awesome just the just how big the shows that he shoots are uh, is like they're big yeah and so if you want to check out some big arena shots or some just some images of artists that just look massive um, that looks like you too even and yeah great stuff and then we've got I don't know who's been on here before and specifically, I like her work with Walk the Moon a lot, but all of her work's great. But I know she's been with them, I think, the longest. And if you get a chance, uh, check her work out. It's, she does some cool stuff called the fan camera, where she'll actually give a camera to the fans and take pictures. But I like that she's you know kind of cheated, uh, uh, toured with these artists over and over again. And yeah, good stuff. We've got John. Um, John does portraits, does works with water parks is where I met him actually in San Diego one time and it's just some of his portraits he has music stuff as well live stuff uh, very cool editing um, sometimes a little trippy I like that but uh, it's got a very distinct style so check it out um, and then Andy I've had on before Andy personally has one of my favorite eyes I've ever seen uh, the reason I love the stuff that he does with Chris Stapleton I love the stuff that he does with natural looking like it's just, there's not a lot of, it's just so natural and crisp. Like, look how beautiful that is. I just love it. Um, and, wow. Everything of his looks so classic. It's almost like photojournalism. It is photojournalism, but it's just, yeah, it's just beautiful. Yeah, we've got some really good people here on today. I am 
definitely feeling honored that everybody decided to come hang because, I mean, this isn't really, like, people, when they come do this, it's not like it benefits them that much. I mean, sure, they get to learn, they get to hang out, they get to be with other people, that's fine, but it's not like it's a, a massive, you know, help to their career or anything at all. So when people do this, it's really them generating, donating their time and effort to help other people talk, hang out, in the name of community and doing doing a service. So make sure we're really nice to people. Say what's up, you know, show them kind of what we're about. And I appreciate it. What's up, Anne? I see you in chat. <laughs> and yeah, I'm I'm excited. It's it's good people. That is 100 percent for sure. And yeah, it's gonna be a good vibe. It's gonna be a good vibe. It's okay. Thank you, Connor, Marissa. We've got Marissa, mod life, and I think. It's okay. Thank you for hanging, Connor. You want to throw those links up one more time before you peace out, just so we have them? Everybody say bye. What's up? Justin's here? Oh, wow. Long time no see, Jaira. I thought we lost you. I thought we lost you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, well, they'll be joining soon, and we'll kind of keep, get going, so I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm going to go back to the six-person hangout. Put me up on here. We'll get these people in. Let's I make this the right size. It's the last time I cut off some people, and I didn't mean to do that. So that's a little tricky, but we'll get it. Perfect. Let's let these people in. Admit. 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 Oh, they're coming in. They're coming in. What up, Brent? Yes. Welcome back. Hello. Hey, Adam. <laughs> no. All right, we'll wait for everybody else to get in. Long time no see, guys. Long time no see. <laughs> um, I was just showing everybody your guys' wet work, so at least people, you know, if they were unfamiliar, I gave them, like, a quick one-minute rundown of your website, so. That's cool. Yeah, that was yeah, nice. Of course. I like the variety so, we have today. Yeah, loads of variety. Um, it's really looks cool. I need to spend quarantine redoing. <laughs> What'd you say? Oh, your website? Yeah, it should be spending quarantine revamping it. Yeah, yeah I'm same here. Table. I need to update mine. I got halfway. I love through. mine. Mine's great. <laughs> it <laughs> it's good, man. It's good. It's good. Website. I, I awesome. finally, re I finally realized I just need to get down to the point where I have like ten pictures on my website and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're still yeah. right. Less is more. Less is more. Yeah. Do you do you find that you're sending your website as your portfolio? Like that is what you are sending to people to approach what like for work and stuff. Sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's funny because I, I never knew anything different. Like, I feel like I'm older than most most of you guys in here. I'm 37, um, <laughs> but, but I'm like, older. Okay, well, <laughs> well, you okay. look, you, so, you look it. <laughs> I feel, <laughs> older. no, but I. That was just always the normal. You send your website to people, mm -hmm. look at your work. It's never like go to Instagram or, or for sure anything else, but. It's yeah. funny, I'm a bit older as well, and website was always my default, but now people just ask for your Instagram first, yeah. like, first yeah. thing. I've actually started, I guess, doing in, it's somewhere in between and making, a, like, a Google Slides and sending them, like, a published Google Slide. Oh, cool. Just because, like, you can quickly edit it and change it, like, in an hour, and that might be more appropriate to what you're pitching for because mm. I can't be bothered to mess around on... Squarespace or whatever, like trying to work yeah. it out. So yeah, I found that that's like kind of a nice way to do it. Um, What's but cool? yeah, everyone's a bit different. Uh, definitely website I found super hard. Like I don't know about you guys, getting it right. So, Yo, yeah. it's hard because you can change it so easily now. It used to be like, oh, I don't want to change it. I got to help my designer and I have to do these things. Now it's like, yeah. well, I just got to log in. <laughs> it's too much control. Yeah. yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Last I have way too many pictures of mine. Like, I, I kind of feel <laughs> like I need to bring it down to like ten, like you were saying, um, Andy. Because it's too, it, I actually need to let somebody else pick as well. That I think I don't think I can oh. choose myself. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. That is a good idea. Last week we had um, Travis Shin and Jonathan Weiner. I think were the two. And they were saying that when they started, it was more normal, obviously, to just take their portfolio to labels and stuff and see oh, yeah. in person. And they're like. Try doing that now. They don't forget you. <laughs> and I thought that was funny. True. I mean, not That's actually. Probably so, it's probably so rare you actually physically go to a place to meet with people anyway, so you can't even bring a book. Especially <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's super hard now. Like, it, yeah. no one is doing any portfolio reviews or meetings or anything in London. Yeah. So, trying to get like they're probably getting swamped with people looking for work as well. So it's even harder to get your work seen by people who are actually publishing it. But it's a good time to work on your website and portfolio. As you said. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. What, what else have you guys like? I don't know about you, but I, usually, you know, we have to do so many things. We're pretty busy. Like, what are the things where you're like, okay, I have no excuse now. I just have to get this done. If that makes sense. Oh, man. I've been meaning to alphabetize my record collection really well, obviously, as you can see. <laughs> it's alphabetized. Like, all the A's are together, but, like, everything in the A is not in order. And oh. the, other, the other two-thirds of it you can't see because they're on the other side of the computer <laughs> and over here. Um, wow. so, yeah. Well, that's important shit. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, John? I start, I... Sorry, go uh, ahead. Am I, uh, am I coming in? Like, can y'all hear me? Yeah, that, that's kind of why I asked right. you, because I was like, well, I haven't heard your voice yet, and I wanted you to I... like... <laughs> I joined right when y'all were talking about everything. So I was like, I, I don't want to like butt in and test my microphone, <laughs> but uh, awesome. Um, wait, are we asking about quarantine? Like what we've been doing? <laughs> Yeah, dude. Have you been doing anything? Anything you needed to catch up on and now you don't have an excuse for? Man, uh, I'm not going to lie. I feel like I've been more busy during this quarantine uh, period than I typically am off tour. Like whenever I'm like off season, I've just had a lot of work that's related to my most previous tour. And so I just something that was supposed to be done in like a month. We're like, oh, well, you know, we're going to take a lot more time to work on it. So I've actually been working uh, and filling up my time with uh, with some special special stuff. Yeah. Mm. And I cut off um, somebody early yeah. when I asked John a question. And now I've cut off John too, uh, but whoever was talking, <laughs> go for it. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, good. my answer is actually very similar to what you were saying. A lot of my clients have been kind of like, you know that show that you shot like two oh. years ago, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, we'd like to maybe yeah. like you know do something with that and you know so i've been going back digging up old projects and whether that be video or stills and you know sending you know doing like test prints and sending like edits so it's actually kind of manic and i expected it to be more quiet but it's everybody's like screaming trying to be as efficient as possible and they're going to the people who make their content and say here take this make magic uh, oh <laughs> <my>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's almost like it's like well i mean it's not like you're going anywhere. Like, what else? Yeah. What else are you, you have going you're... on? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Uh, they know you're they... at home at your computer, so that's yes. it. They know you're stuck yes. at home, and they've got yes. you in prison. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. my exactly. god. Yeah, it used to oh, be funny. like, I'm not home. I can't get you these files. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I was like, we know where you are. I'm like, ah, well, we yeah, we know you have it all in the cloud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Don't there was worry, also. I'll... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say there's a million more excuses I can to dig out that, yep. not to dig out that hard drive, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was going to say it's it almost kind of like 1,300 miles a... away from my hard drive. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Go. Yeah, you actually can't get it then. Oh, well. <laughs> well. What were you going to say, John? I, I, I honestly, I forgot. It was something in that <laughs> line. It was something to the to that effect where it's like, I feel like there was so much pressure. It's like... Hey, so now that you're home for extended periods of time, it's like, what are you going to do? What are you going to catch up on? Like, how are you going to improve this and this? It's just like, oh, I'm kind of just trying to chill <laughs> and take some time off and not be uh, filling up my schedule whenever I'm not working. So I don't know. It's been it's been an interesting balance between everything. Yeah, it's, it's mm. definitely hard. That. It's definitely hard to like when you have a relationship with somebody and you work for them, it's hard when they ask you to help them out with something to be like, no or like how do you differentiate when you need to ask somebody to pay you for like do you know what i mean like it's like oh wait it's just paid work or i don't know if you guys have that yeah, struggle yeah. ever yeah mm -hmm. i mean just communicating yeah, kinda, is the key like you just yeah. gotta be open and honest and figure it out from the get-go because once it's all like expectations like you kind of set mm -hmm. expectations for whoever you're working with and then you gotta kind of just have like a working relationship back and forth and then it's uh then everyone knows what everyone's doing in in theory. Yeah, mm. exactly. Yeah, well, that's fair. Um, so yeah, it's hard though. You never know where the line. Is. Sometimes the line gets blurred the more you work with people and the more they become friends. And yeah, you got to work it out yourself. It's kind of like sometimes it can be hard to it can be hard to send an invoice after 
sometimes <laughs> after having like you know you, you've worked, you've gone to shoot a show with a band or work with a client and then they've brought you out to dinner after and you know it's become a social thing and then at the end of the day it just feels wrong to send an invoice <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah adam yeah. you actually gave some good advice on that to me of I don't know, whenever we did that workshop in San Diego, it said oh, something yeah. about just like embracing the conversation transactionally and you don't have to make it personal, just like it is what it is. So just talk about it that way. Yeah. Um, and obviously that line is harder to draw with close relationships, as you say. But, you know, if you're if you're looking for ways to facilitate, like raising a price or asking what you feel is fair, but you feel like it's an awkward subject to broach with somebody, then just going into it with a transactional mindset and not making it feel weird or uh, uncomfortable and then they don't really receive it that way yeah like they won't receive it uncomfortably it. yeah I, th I think yeah. like a lot of the confusion comes up when you take something that's business and social and you you know it, it's a lot a lot of things in life when you cross them wrongly or interpret it incorrectly whether it be you know somebody paying for a meal or something is difficult <laughs> you know like it's all these things yeah. that it's like and it it's like this awkward thing so i don't know that we're I, I would assume most of you guys are pretty good at that given your career choice it's it's, it's a hard line to yeah this, this whole industry yeah. is that <laughs> yeah that's exactly what it is i think like, touring find... is easy touring is pretty straightforward <laughs> find the person find the person who deals with the invoices and only speak to them about <laughs> yes that's exactly it like i never we're certain bands like i'll i'll never chat to the band about the money you oh yeah you make sure you almost need to make sure that you don't have too casual a relationship with the person who pays the invoices and that way it's never awkward to speak to them in a business manner yeah you that's know? fair you almost have to compartmentalize your yeah yeah conversations yeah 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 that makes sense. advice Wow, I feel like I'm learning already, guys. This is cool. <laughs> um, for those of you who are just joining us, uh, I'll just give a quick run through of what we're doing today. Thank you for coming. This channel is a little bit different. I, I don't really say thank you for following and all that stuff because we have conversation going. So just know ahead of time, I do appreciate anybody who followed me on Twitch or came here. Um, if you have any questions while we're doing this, feel free to ask, respond to the people. We are, I am at least always reading chat if I'm ever looking away. It's because it's on my phone. So I'm not being disrespectful. Um, but that being said, Thank you guys for joining. Um, I guess we'll kind of go around and say, like, everybody can do, like, a one-minute or 30-second thing of, like, this is where I am, this is uh, what I do, and then um, after that, we'll talk about, I mean, my main goal today was just everybody in common here has long-term relationships or has proved that they can work with the same client uh, successfully over a course of years, which I think is a very difficult thing to do and a very difficult thing to identify the right people to do with. So I was hoping we kind of go deeper into that today and just talk about what that's like because it's, I don't know, it's so, it's so big, it's so vast. So um, that's my vibe, and that's what we're gonna be doing today. And we've got also real quick, I just want to say Yassi in chat. We've got uh, a bunch of other photographers here supporting, so I appreciate you guys coming out. Um, we've got some uh, Marissa and Parker doing mod the mods, so I appreciate you guys doing that as well. And um, yeah. Anyway, I don't know. Anna, you want to go Anna, Ed, Andy, John, Peter, and everybody can just kind of say they're, they're I don't know how it's appearing on your screen, but that goes like this for me. It works. Like cool. This. Sounds good. Yeah, cool. Um, I am Anna. I'm based in LA. I've been doing music photography like seven or eight years now. Um, touring for like at least about that long. Um, and my the client that I have the most history with is Walk the Moon. Um, I also have quite a bit of history with um, the Struts and Ex Ambassadors. So those have been my repeat touring clients um, just for the purposes of this hang. <laughs> oh yeah. I think, I think, uh, I, yeah, I you're, was you're like good, it. you're good, Ed, you're good. Cool. <laughs> uh, I'm Ed, I've uh, been taking photos for about 10 years of punk and hardcore bands mainly. Um, grew up in that scene and started off shooting uh, architects when they were, you know, kind of coming up in like 2007, 2008. But I wasn't really a full time photographer. I was just sort of going to shows in the evening and um, going to shows in the weekend and, and putting pictures on Flickr and Tumblr, if you remember those. <laughs> um, and then kind of transitioned over to Instagram along with a lot of you guys here. And then uh, I was working a full time job. And uh, one day I quit that job after five years and didn't really know what I was going to do. Wanted to get back into taking photos. And this, this was around five years ago. 
And uh, the next day I got an email from Architects saying like, do you want to come on tour with us? Do you want to work <laughs> with us? And it was kind of just like really out of the blue, not sure like kind of how it happened. But I'd always been working with bands and they remembered some pictures from their tours before. And I think it sort of just like built up from then. And that's led me to have like a really long relationship with them, which um, is an important one and has uh, enabled me to do everything else that I do now. So yeah, that's me. That's awesome. Awesome. Sweet. All right, well, I'm Andy. Um, I have been touring since about uh, 2006. Um, I first started, <clears throat> I started with a uh, band Switchfoot. Um, I toured with them for about four or five years. Um, I used to do all their like, we had video podcasts like back in the day when you had to like upload it to iTunes and all that <laughs> stuff, you know, before YouTube even existed. Um, <clears throat> so I worked with them for about four or five years. Um, and then I toured with Foster the People um, for another four or five years. Um, was with them the first day that they got a tour bus um, all the way through their second album cycle. Um, and now I work with Chris Stapleton. I live in Nashville. I got the, I got the hat, you know, live in Nashville. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I tour with Chris Stapleton. So now I'm kind of in the, mainly in the country world, um, but shoot, still shoot for a bunch of other people here and there. Okay. And I've been, I've, been with Chris, I've been with Chris now for about five years. That's awesome. Sick, man. Yeah. John, is it my turn? We're summoning <laughs> you. It's okay. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, my order is completely different, so I was just waiting um, <laughs> uh, to let, for you to let me know. Um, okay, wow, switch foot. That's insane. That 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 definitely that definitely takes me back too. Uh, that's awesome. We were meant to um, Hi, I'm. For so I'm, much more. I'm, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm John. I um, I've been doing photo video stuff uh, since. I was a I was a kid. I think I first picked it up like in middle school, high school, and um, I actually during that time was doing photo and video work for friends of mine that uh, would do local shows and do all that kind of stuff. And uh, as we as we grew up and you know went on and whatever, uh, my friend's band uh, got signed, <laughs> and they're like, "Hey, we're going on tour in 2016," and I was working full time in California at Apple. And cool. they reached out. They reached out, and they're like, "Hey, uh, we're going on tour." I was like, "What? Like, like a tour tour? Like, actually, it's like, yeah, we're going with Never Shout Never across the nation." I was just like, "What? Like, what? like yeah." But the thing is, we need someone to like document this because this is pretty cool. I was like, "All right." I reached out, got thirty days off of work, you know, time off, and. Um, at the end of the tour, we got more like gig offers. Uh, Good Charlotte was going to take the band out and like Warp Tour was about to happen and all this stuff. So I was like, call I called my work and I was you like, quit. you know what, guys? <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't think I'm coming back. Yeah. Um, and with the thumbs up, like, yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> exactly. Um, and so uh, since uh, 2016, I've been doing this uh, full time. It was kind of by accident. Congrats, but, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. And now, uh, now awesome. I'm here, and I've been working with uh, with water parks since 2016, um, since way before then, but consistently at least. And I almost, almost pretty much work exclusively with them when it comes to like touring and uh, things like that. Respect. That's awesome. Cool story mm. too. Thank you. Yeah, that is. All right, Peter. It's very, it's very bizarre. <laughs> Peter, you're the only one left, so. Cool, it's grand. So uh, I'm Peter. Um, I kind of started shooting gigs in 2009, so I've been going quite quite a while quite a while now. And then, kind of the first kind of big client that I picked up regularly was the script. I've been working with them since 2011, so it's coming up on 10 years next year. Wow. Um, but yeah, no, they're great. They're amazing to work with. And kind of done the most over the last couple of years. Most of my work has either been with them and with Rick Astley. Um, yes. oh, 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 oh. yeah yeah who uh, uh which has been like uh amazing uh, he's actually though a lot of people don't realize because they know him for one thing he's like one of the best performers i've ever seen oh, like, i watch his live videos they're so good <laughs> yeah he's, he is he's just and the most unbelievable voice but yeah so it's, it's, it's the script and rick Astley who i worked over the last couple of years most with 
and you know i i guess with the with the scripts it's been nearly 10 years like they're really good mates as well so just like all the things we were talking about earlier it's just you know finding that that line and you know having that one person you can talk business stuff about is really important but it's also been great because when i moved from ireland in 2012 to the uk i had them as a client and they really they were kind of aware like that in Ireland at the time, this shit was hitting the fan with the economy. So they were kind of aware that I was making this move over here and they kind of helped me up introdu introducing me to new clients and stuff, which is great. And incidentally, John, I also worked for Apple. I worked oh, for, nice. I, I, yeah, I worked for <laughs> Apple here in the UK for four years and I had several of those interesting um, leaves that you talk, you know, where you get time uh, off. And yeah. I did the exact same thing of actually, oh, I'm not coming back. Yeah. So, oh, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Yeah. I feel uh, like were they carried the way for me? <laughs> yeah, were they like super cool with you like taking the time off to go do that? Amazing. That, so, yeah, exactly. So good about it. Exactly. Good they were they were so supportive. They're like, that sounds amazing, and we would be upset if you didn't take this uh, opportunity. Yeah. So I was like, all yeah. right, I'll, I'll I'll go do it. Or or maybe 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 we were just crap at our jobs and they <laughs> needed to shoot. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> like yeah, go go do that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. go do that. We'll support you. Yeah. Very similarly, I worked at an Apple store no. in between tours at one point. Is that the oh, same thing? Word. No. I did I? Did I? No, you didn't add. Did you really? Yeah, I, I'm not kidding. Yeah, yeah. Anna, that's I have Apple stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. It's like uh, being a music photographer. Or being a photographer is just the next. You, Apple is actually the first place you work, and then you become right. A music photographer. Yeah. Yeah. If I teach I my know. mom how to use her iPhone, do I technically work? You're for an Apple, Apple genius. There you go. That's okay. called that's, being a child. That's yeah, called yeah. being somebody in this year. Everybody's yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I sorry. I have to show you something here. This beer that I was drinking. Yeah. Oh. It's actually one of Rick Astley's beers. Oh my wow. god. <laughs> yeah. So that's just so crazy. you know. <laughs> oh, he has his own beer. Oh, that's awesome. He does. He owns. Hilarious. Yeah, getting Rick yeah, rolled. Owns a bar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, not not getting licked. Getting ricked. Oh, yeah, no. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> That's also that's so funny. So many, so many, uh, so much overlap between those those two worlds. That's really cool. Yes. Well, that's where bands actually scout their photography. Yeah, they <laughs> go to yeah. Apple yeah. Store. Every band goes to an they Apple, go to the store. Apple store. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it would seem so. Day well, off. It's actually it's actually a pretty. I mean, that obviously the conversation thought about that, but you'd be surprised. That's like where <laughs> Apple people. That's what they do. They're like all in some sort of creative field. I yeah. know people that left yeah. to be actors, writers, uh, bands, uh, stuff For like sure. that. Yeah. Yeah. It's very very common. It's like the, yeah, it's the, like exactly. it's like where the creators meet each other. It's like a it's like being a mason, but just for mm -hmm. like creatives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's the secret society while i was working at the london store it was the people who were working there now go on to be like hosting like some of the biggest podcasts yep. on like apple music and oh, yeah. they've gone on to be in like some of the biggest bands in top charts since like the last 10 that's years that's so crazy like, hey, are, hey, sorry they, ed were you in r092 i was yeah yeah i'll stay here <laughs> oh, oh. there you go I, but it's, oh my uh, word. <laughs> but yeah it's the best thing about that is the people who work there are like the pool of talent is unbelievable if you mm. like actually went through and like looked at everyone's personal work that they did which sadly not enough people kind of came together you get a few pockets of people who really would but they didn't I, well at least while i was there champion that enough and people would leave and you wouldn't really yeah. hear of them and then you'd see them like five years yeah. down the line and they'd be like doing something amazing you'd be like wow oh, and they wow. went and they were just working hard at, at that's, home constantly that's amazing they just wanted that discount to get all the yeah. apple stuff they needed to make uh, <laughs> the things we figured yeah. it out we've been missing step one this whole time it's working mm -hmm. apple yeah. well i could i could i ask a quick question who's you uh, me, John, no, can John who, who, are you, who are you asking? Are you asking everybody? Oh, to everyone, yes. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh, I was like, John, I'd like to ask a question. Um, uh, well, it, I saw that this is pretty common uh, with a lot of people that I've met in, in this industry. I mean, did anyone else like first realize that they could actually learn how to create stuff with like iMovie, iPhoto, GarageBand or anything like that? Because that's how I started. I had no idea how to work a camera until a friend of mine, like at their house, I was on an I was on a Mac, an iMac. Yeah. And they showed me iMovie and I was like, this is what I want to do. I want I need a Mac. I need a Mac. And then yeah. since then it's been 
it's been history. And I think that's why yeah, a lot of people. John, same. <laughs> yes, same, exactly. Same that's why that happens. Yeah, 100% they, yeah. Same. they like made it. I would say I they like see. took away the barrier. They made it mm-hmm. easier to like learn these things. Mm-hmm. You didn't mm-hmm. have to know so much technical stuff. The same way like a digital camera made it easier for everybody to be mm-hmm. able to talk. I don't know. Yep. What were we going to say, yep. Anna? Yeah, oh, I, I learned video editing before I even really started getting into photography. And the way that I taught myself was I borrowed my older sister's Mac that she had like for her classroom. She was a mm-hmm. teacher. It was like one of the – whatever was – and maybe it was like the white ones, like the brick. Yeah. And I taught myself how to edit video by brick. creating um, um, lyric videos for yes. <laughs> songs off of Jimmy at World Futures album. And I just like Perfect. learned wow. timing and Let's cuts see those, that way. please. Oh, oh I, don't, yeah, I wish awesome. I still had them. Oh. That was like, you know, you do. Know, like 12 years ago. <laughs> no, no. no, I really, I wish I did. You're at home, find the hard drive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's computer awesome. doesn't work anymore. All right. Well, okay. So that's, that's all I wanted to ask about that. That was a great question, John. Sorry. I gave you such a yeah, hard time. Sure. That's great. No, I mean, that, that's all good. The barrier just the, oh, hold up. The Jimmy world. That was the very first show I ever shot in my entire life when I was oh, in high school mm-hmm. on the, on the clarity tour at the Roxy. Wow. <laughs> wow. But that was, that was when I realized that you could do like creative things. Cause I had taken a photo class just because I heard it was easy. Mm. I heard it was like an easy class. And there was this girl that I thought was cute. So I was like, oh, I'll take this class because she's in the class. And then like within like my first two weeks, my teacher was like, oh, you actually like have a good eye. Like you should <laughs> take photos. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay. And so I literally was going to a Jimmy World show like a couple weeks later. So I just brought my camera. And it was then at the Roxy, I literally, It was at the Roxy, yeah. Damn. They let you bring um, it in? Yeah. I mean, yeah. and it was just like my little 35 millimeter. I mean, this was in 1999. So this was before like digital yeah. cameras. Everyone was there with their, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So um, those were still some of my like favorite photos. But Aww, that's yeah. sick. That's so cool. Brilliant. I've shot them at the Roxy yeah. also a couple of oh, years nice. ago. Such a nice. cool venue to see them. In. Oh, it's it awesome. Intimate. You guys all have yeah. more in common than I was expecting. This was great. <laughs> <laughs> was like yeah. so many wow. parallel we all We all met together before mm. we got on the zoom call with you we <laughs> synchronized our stories exactly. we just had it up free and... mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> um cool well, i think that this honestly ties in perfectly to what we're talking about today because i mean really when you're talking about meeting all these people at apple it's kind of like that's networking in in a way mm-hmm. like meeting all these people and yeah. i know we use the word networking and sometimes it sounds like a little businessy for something that really isn't that businessy it's it's more so relationships they're almost like interchangeable yeah. um but I wanted to ask, like, when you guys are meeting people or meeting artists and you're, you know, you're getting on these tours and, you know, it's easy to say, you know, I was friends with them or I'm trying to think of other people. We don't know your actual story and how you met these people, but I'm sure it came down to relationships. And I was wondering if you guys could talk a little bit about, like, what you think of when somebody says, well, what is good networking? Like, what, what, what would you say is, like, the right way to network? And if you guys could sum that up and maybe you can say like some examples or any of your experiences and whoever wants to start, take it or take a moment to think. Well, I'll give, I'll give you an example. Yeah. That kind of comes to mind because someone asked me a similar question the other day. When you first work for a client on a tour, you kind of have to be very aware that, you know, none of the people on that tour, for instance, a production manager or a stage manager, they don't know you potentially at all from any... And they may have done 10 shows before you arrived and they have a really wild oil machine and you're this unknown entity that's coming into their environment. Mm-hmm. So your first job is to demonstrate that A, that you're not a prick, <laughs> and, you know, and that you know how to play with a team and, you know, and show respect. And that might be a, a case of, you know, taking the time to, you know, ask them what are their the kind of their house rules in the program? What, what are they like? Nobody's what do they where's OK to go? Where's not OK to go? You know, or, you know, or it might be a case of chatting to the lighting designer and, you know, what are the the big points from them or just simply being someone who's kind of nice to have around and helping out, you know, because there might be sometimes as a photographer in the tour, you can be really busy, but you can have lots of downtime as well. And you might be if you see the, you know, the tour manager is struggling to get all the the set lists printed and delivered. You're like, I've got 10 minutes free. I can just do this. So. Yeah, you, a lot of it is soft skills, and which lays the groundwork for you actually be giving the opportunities to get the stuff you need later on. And it's just nice to be nice at the end of the day. Yeah, that makes sense. I would say that that definitely is like being 
being a good person or a person people actually want to be around is the most important thing because for 23 hours out of the day, they're not on stage or like the band's not on stage. So you got to be a good hang first of all, and just like a good, a good <laughs> yeah. person. And then obviously you have to back it up with good work. I mean, that's, that's the best like networking tool is like friends will show people like my work or whatever. And like, they'll just be like, Oh, here's some like good photos. And he's like a good dude. And so then it's a lot easier to get hired when you have like recommendations like that, instead of like, Oh, he's kind of a pain, but he's good, I guess. So at his job, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I can actually tie this back into Apple. I know, I know I can. <laughs> There's this Apple agenda with, yeah. with this. We have a quota. We have to admit <laughs> yeah. it a certain yeah. number of times. Yeah. Sponsored by Apple. Yes. Oh, God. Um, <clears throat> in terms of like networking and uh, establishing those relationships, I mean, anytime that I've helped uh, like train new employees or helped, uh, you know, with like interview process and things like that, a big part of that whole ordeal is not so much showing that you're like a brainiac and you know everything and you know the most about like you know the technology and all of and all of that but it's mainly just like kind of kind of like you said you're with them for 23 hours out of the day similarly if you were stuck with this person that you know you might bring on tour for example uh like on an airplane ride and they're next to you for like you know four six hours or anything like that would you be comfortable having a conversation with them would you get off that plane being like you know that was that was good <laughs> that mm -hmm. was that was fine or is it kind of just like oh my goodness and just having uh kind of repeating what, what y'all are saying just having that good first impression and having that like good aura about you uh, is just is so crucial and whenever we're networking at like social events or at other shows or anything like that it's just showing it's like hey you're not a prick exactly like you said it's like hey you know you know how to present yourself professionally and uh casually to a, to a degree and you know i feel like the portfolio will speak for itself it's like if you can if you can take photos if you can do your work it's like that will show but mm -hmm. that's not really the only reason why uh, anyone ever gets picked for a tour that's yeah <clears throat> that's yeah that's huge i don't know if anybody else wants to speak to it yeah i mean i'll just echo what everybody else said <laughs> i think it's interesting having listened to everyone's comment and how they tie together it's so much less of a discussion about your ability as a photographer and so much more of a discussion about you as a person and your dynamic with the other people on the tour. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, there's for every one person documenting a tour, there's 10 other people that are equally qualified in their skill set yeah. to do it. Mm -hmm. And so it's who the band uh, or artist or client or whoever feels comfortable with, who do they want to spend their time with? Um, who do they trust? Trust is such a big thing. And it's about, mm -hmm. you know, if you are fortunate to find your way into a situation with a new client and you want to build a long-term relationship with them, go above and beyond, like over deliver and let them build a, you know, build a reputation where they know like, okay, if we bring this person, we're going to get what we need. And they are also mm -hmm. going to listen to our notes, mm -hmm. take our mm -hmm. feedback and just like mm -hmm. work with us in a creative capacity and they're good hang you know this person doesn't come with a disclaimer you don't want to be the, that yeah. that person <laughs> yeah. well and like Absolutely. i know I, I hope it's okay if i ask you specifically ed but everybody kind of shared their story and i know you said with architects they just kind of hit you up what was that like was that a networking thing was that like you got vouched for by other people was that purely off of your work do you know like how that came to be or like so uh when I first was shooting with um, punk and hardcore bands, I went on tour with a band who were opening for them in 2013 called Landscapes, who are no longer a band. Mm -hmm. And um, they, we went on, that, went on that tour together and I went with them for like four or five days. They were supporting us. And I would literally just try and chat to anyone um, on that tour and make friends. And on that tour, it was straight from the path, North Lane and Architects, who, bands who have gone on to do like insanely amazing things all, all in their own degree mm -hmm. but they've gone on to ultimately still stay friends and be now friends of mine that sort of it's grown over time but at the beginning there I was just sort of sneaking around meeting people taking photos not getting paid for anything and couldn't make the whole tour due to work commitments so it was just making 
you know, which the shows that I could with them having the pass in. Uh, and on the last night in London, I took photos of architects who didn't have a photographer on that tour, by the way, mm -hmm. that at that point, I feel like 2013 was when a lot of people started getting like full-time people running with them. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just shot that show and the photos are like still there, like WhatsApp display pictures and stuff from that <laughs> show. It's like, mm, that's so like, crazy. You know what I mean? It's like, so some people just like took those photos and loved them and, and ran with them. And then I guess just like, it was, it was like three years later that I started working with them full time in 2016. Okay. Um, so, um, but I guess like there was just some degree of networking there, but like, I don't know if they would have remembered me personally, but maybe the work as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I sort of more, I more like got into it by doing that, by taking photos, going for free, like taking a few photos and then enjoying the show and then sort of just like growing into it being like, Oh, I might be able to turn this into my job maybe we'll see and, and it just sort of organically happens that makes sense yeah and that, that kind of like speaks to me to like a little bit more it's not so much who you know but it's kind of who knows you and you know if you're mm -hmm. being a good person like you guys are saying and operating that way you know people will pick up on that and they'll be like oh i want this person around like you're saying on tour and they'll notice that what do you guys think is let's see what was i gonna say what do you guys think like obviously we were all uh, how to explain this in 2010 I thought I was a better photographer than I probably was and looking back in 2010 I was like wow <laughs> what, what was I doing like how did people hire me but at the time I felt like hey this is good enough for me to get hired and that changes as it goes but that being said how much do you think of it is how good you are at creating photos how much of it do you think is because of your work or is it more like which how would you weight that or how I don't I don't know does that make sense <laughs> I mean, I think the, the photos are definitely like the foot in the door, because especially if it's something that, or it's a situation where like they're not meeting you first, mm -hmm. they obviously see see good work and are drawn to it, at least one would hope. Yeah. And then um, like like for me with Switchfoot, I was just shooting for my college newspaper. Oh, awesome. And like ran, ran I was, shoot, was shooting a show, they were playing The Glass House. This was like right before their like big album, Beautiful Letdown came out. And um i just shot photos and ran it in our school newspaper and sent a few copies off to the promoter who they sent um some copies of the, our college paper to switch what's management and then i got an email from their drummer one day that just said hey we like this photo so say they saw the work and were like could we meet you and see any more photos that you took from that night so i went and met <laughs> him the drummer at like an in and out burger and just like had all my, <laughs> my negatives had all my negatives i made a contact sheet because it was back when i was shooting all film and um so just like started a relationship with them that way and so then anytime they would play in california once they met me and were like okay he's like a nice dude and he can take some photos so i would just kind of slowly build up a relationship with them and then it was probably after two and a half years of them just, like just kind of invite me to shows in southern california um when they asked me to actually come on tour with them and i was just like of course so um, yeah, it's obviously like the work is the initial thing, but then you mm -hmm. have to be be someone that they want to keep bringing back. It's kind of like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit of stars aligning. And isn't it so funny mm -hmm. to like look back at the chain of communication that led to you making yeah. ultimate contact with like whatever <laughs> yeah. clients, like this person showed it to this person and like yeah. you know, based yeah. this, thought it was interesting. And, you know, it's it's funny. It's not always who you think it is like the person you think you need to go after to like pitch to is not always what's going to get mm -hmm. you there sometimes it's just having prolific work and then they stumble upon it somehow mm -hmm. has anyone ever had I don't know why it just popped into my head but i think it was because my daughter was tried to play a trick of me the other day <laughs> as i think as our um as kind of music photographers, we tend to have people in our phone book that we know you wouldn't want anyone else to have their number if they were drunk. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and my, daughter the other, my, my daughter the other day was, scr she, she figured out what my, what my pin code was on my phone. Oh. Uh, because I'm, I'm using pin code now more because with a mask, it doesn't work. So oh, <laughs> with, face, with a face ID. So she noticed when we were out walking to the shops, what my pin code was. So the other day she was like, uh, Daddy, I'm going to ring Rick. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> so it's um, yeah. I just wonder if anyone here has had any any moments like that where um, 
somebody's got hold of their phone. Not yet. Oh, fortunately not. not yet. That, but I can imagine how that would be. I have had moments, yeah. where, moments. where I've bought, let, brought like my hometown friends to a show, and I was just like, the one thing you can't do is punish any of the musicians in their personal time. You can't get drunk, <laughs> go ask some questions. And then yeah. I remember at Warp Tour, I looked over and my friend was just talking to a singer. I was like, well, it was like 10 years ago, obviously. Yeah. But I was just like, I'm trying so hard. Like, those things are so important with networking and how you read mm. the room and stuff. And it was just like, yeah. <laughs> so that being I mean, said, yeah. yeah, go, go okay. John. No, go for it. Uh, no. No, I was just gonna. I was just gonna touch on it. Um, I don't think I've had anything very specific like that, uh, Peter. Where it's like you know, phone. Like I have to hide my phone uh, so that people can't get in touch with <laughs> those uh, certain people. But um, I mean, kind of, kind of like I mentioned, I've been like lifelong friends with uh, the band that I that I work with. So it's been a lot of just like very interesting family related events where like uh you know be hanging out with them or they'll come to a show in houston to see like what's going on that's where i'm at by the way and um and uh, they'll all come out and be like hey like we want to like go backstage just like we know we know this person we know that person your your family overstepping uh telling security they know the photographer of the band (laughs) they're just like come on and they're just like oh my goodness so i mean i mean there's definitely a little there's a little moderation. There's a little bit of moderation there for sure, where it's like, <laughs> like, yeah, this is also this is also work. Yeah, it, it, that's, I, that's so funny. I think it's hard to teach family and friends, especially the, the the social intricacies of being at a show or interacting with an artist. What do you guys mm-hmm. think are the things? Like, we can all understand, like, hey, don't be a dick to somebody. That's pretty straightforward. But yeah. what is that? Sometimes people don't understand what that fully encompasses. So, what are the things that you would consider? Uh, things that maybe you see people do and they don't realize are a bad way to network or something that is like not uh, doesn't fall into the category of being a good person that maybe they misidentify. Uh, I don't know if there's anything mm-hmm. you guys think of, but um, other than the blatantly obvious things. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think like if you are ever like at a tour, like I always picture it as you're visiting someone's home mm-hmm. just because in terms of if someone's on tour, they're living in a bus behind this building, they're coming inside to take showers. They're like, you know, just like this, is, you're kind of in their space for the day. So it's like you kind of, every house kind of has their own house mm-hmm. rules. Like some people like you take off your shoes, some people you don't. So it's like kind of just feeling out the situation and just being like respectful and being like a good person and wanting to kind of um, just respect like the house rules, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had a situation with, um, I think, well, I think knowing when to put the lens cap on, I guess is the way to put it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's like there was an artist I was working with um, a number of years ago and backstage, it was one of the first times I'd worked with that artist and he was kind of warming up, you know, doing vocal vocal stuff in the, in the changing room. And, you know, I was taking some stills and left the room. And just as I was about to leave the room, his wife and kids walked in and you know so i just instinctively put the lens cap on because i was aware for all this family knew for all they knew i was i was like you know just paparazzi or they didn't know who i was so i kind of felt like it was important that i put the lens cap on and that i knew where to draw the line between my job and this person's family time and i think um so it's very easy for people to unintentionally make mistakes in that area yeah you know and and so someone might just not that there might be f- so focused on the, getting the good content that someone might walk into the room and they might not mentally just evaluate should i actually continue or sh- is this a moment where i should just give them some space and when you know an artist really well you still have to remember that at times they need space because at the end of the day they might be jumping onto a stage in front of fifty thousand people uh, in 30 minutes you know in 30 minutes time so you know even if they're be- even if you're mates with them you need to sometimes remember to step back from being a mate and be professional and walk out of the room that's fair. And I, I thought it was also interesting, and you might not even think anything of it, but just, I mean, when you were saying that story, you were saying uh, that artist, you weren't specifically talking about it. And that's like another important thing I think is that, you know, the confidentiality of the nature of the job or not speaking of people in specific interactions or name dropping is pretty important because like you guys said earlier, yeah. trust is such a integral part of this. And there's a reason why I'm not like, you know, tell me your specific experience with this person on this day. It's mm-hmm. like, it's not important to get the point across. Mm-hmm. And it would, in my opinion, jeopardize your guys' relationships with your artists. 
Yeah, so. there's a lot of equity and trust in in well client relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, cool. And there's an art to reading the room. Yeah. yeah. You don't always we're get all, it right, but the longer now. you work We're just with... like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Sometimes yeah. it's silent. You don't always get it right, though. Yeah. Have you, guys, what... have you guys have any good mess-up stories where you're like, whoops? <laughs> oh, man. Just one of them. You don't have to. Oh, no. Uh, hmm. I got to think about this one. So you, have to, you it, have to think a bit it, safe. Well, in, in relation to the conversation, because <laughs> yeah. it's, um, yeah. You don't like, have to. We don't have to share those. It's mm. cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. Because I, 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 the, the reason why I had that first reaction is like, oh, I know I definitely do. <laughs> I know that there's a bank of them. It's I just, just like, wait, do you hold block on, them out? It, no, I'm just trying to make it relevant is all like, well, which one actually ties into like best practices and professionalism and things like that? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, hmm. And I feel like you're deep in thought right now. Like you are. I had, I have one just really, and we've yeah. probably all done it, but when I was fairly green at this and probably one of the first times that I actually shot from on stage, I committed the cardinal sin of wearing a bright red top mm -hmm. on stage, <laughs> you know, and mm -hmm. it was in, it was literally my prop, one of my first times on stage and it was in Radio City Music Hall in New York. Mm. and Big it idea. was just like yeah and i just i remember just looking back at the footage of the gig and thinking what was i doing and like i have <laughs> never ever gone on stage with anything other than dark clothes since i will never make that mistake again. <laughs> there's such I a learning one time, curve right mm -hmm. yeah it just you have to have reps you know just to like get like oh i did this wrong like i need to figure this out like oh i did this wrong i need to figure that out I remember, yeah. I remember one time I was with Switchfoot and we were at like a, a rock festival like in the UK, I believe, and Aerosmith was headlining. And their photographer literally was just walking around on stage in front of the drum riser, like everywhere, just didn't even care at all. Just was like going like this, just like getting, getting trying to get shots and stuff. And it just like drove me crazy the whole time, <laughs> like just watching it. I'm like, just at least attempt to try and not be seen. Like just, <laughs> mm. just try. Mm. But I mean, Steven Tyler was looking around like posing at him and stuff. So I'm like, all right, I guess that's what he wants. That's their, that's their thing. Like you don't know. That's their thing. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. That's so funny. And as someone who wouldn't be their thing, like I was watching it like sweating, just like stressed yeah. out. Yeah. But, yeah. I've, uh, I've, I've definitely uh, toured with um, artists where uh, their video person is very much a part of the performance. It was a very bizarre dynamic, um, but the guy with the gimbal out there is like getting people hype and interacting with the performer and interacting with the crowd. And it's just like, it's complete opposite of what you would imagine where it's like, okay, kind of get in, get out really quick. But this mm -hmm. person's like, <laughs> he's a part of the show. Um, it's so bizarre learning, kind of like Anna, Anna said, uh, that learning curve of like, how do you get into that good flow? And I do have a very vague <laughs> mess up uh, that I did that. once. Uh, and when I say vague, it's because I don't want to like say like names or anything like that. Yeah, me, but you're good. I was, yeah, I was, um, I was in the studio uh, documenting a uh, like the recording process for one of uh, Waterparks's like first albums, and I'm just capturing everything first time doing this i'm like okay i'm getting the the engineer i'm getting the band i'm getting people coming in and coming out like you know their managers are stepping in stepping out and like all of this and um there's there's someone in that group uh related to their <laughs> related people related to other people that work with the band that came in and me just like unknowingly knowing what i'm doing i'm like getting like footage of everything, someone of, of a particular like stature walks in and I start filming them and I immediately just like freeze. I was like, oh, uh, it's like, I don't know. Like, should I film this? Should I not film this? And yeah. so all like, <laughs> so I just turned off the camera and I just kind of put it down and pretended like I didn't just do that. They totally saw every, like every moment of that and like the horror on my face. It's like, am I supposed to film this part? Cause you're, I don't know. You're just know. trying to read the room. Like Peter's saying like lens cap, no lens cap. I don't know. Exactly. And I was like, no, this feels this feels like it's off limits. But then ironically enough, they were like, how come you didn't get that? That was such a good interaction. I was like, oh, I don't know. It's like, I don't know what I'm doing. 
Um, but yeah, it's just, again, getting that flow is, uh, it's tricky and it doesn't, it doesn't come super fast, at least in my experience, it didn't, but knowing the right time to uh, put the camera away is, is, is very, very crucial. And that's where that trust comes in, that equity. That's mm. like, we know that he can be around or she can be involved in this area and they're not going to make it weird. And they're not, they know when, when to, uh, capture or, you know, put it away. So God, and the, yeah, that, totally. it pains me to this day, that moment. I was like, oh God. We all have those. Yeah, mm. exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's no playbook for it. You don't get it right. I mean, oh, Anna, you left us. Uh-oh. <laughs> She's a pixel. Only oh, horror stories to me. I always forget the oh, name of that. Wait, I'm... Anna, you're back. But I always forget the name of that, like, back? the, the emo for back. that face, yeah. Yeah, you're good. You're good now. Go for it. Start on over, though. <laughs> um, um, wow, I'm old. What was I just saying? <laughs> 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 that's a good. That's uh, yeah, a good just, way to do it. Oh, I'm old. <laughs> I'm I'm old. It's fine. I use that excuse uh, for a lot. So I'm pandemic brain. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Just there's. There's the learning curve, and when you're starting out, you're like you don't know what you don't know, and so you yeah. just just be really open to like taking correction or correcting yourself, and you kind of like learn your way around that minefield, so to speak, of um, social appropriateness. Mm -hmm. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, I was. Uh, I can relate on these. I feel like we've all had done our socially awkward mm -hmm. and socially inappropriate things yeah. but like the relationship with the artist is like hey i've done everything correct the other 99 percent of the time so this one time i did this thing just know it's not my intention and mm -hmm. i just yeah, yeah. made a mistake so i'm sorry <laughs> and mm -hmm. i feel like the artists are usually pretty cool with it as long as you didn't like insult their family member or something like that you're usually <laughs> pretty good mm -hmm. yeah 100 percent um, yeah, I nearly I nearly broke a guitar once on an artist, and thank God it survived. I knocked over this particular stand <laughs> with this really valuable acoustic guitar, and I just I'll never forget. I actually still, even just thinking about it, I get that same feeling in my stomach of dread. But um, yeah, it all worked out in the end. But <clears throat> I did that with Switchfoot pretty... with a microphone in their studio one time. I was like stepping back, and I knocked over like some really expensive mic, and I just. I'll leave. immediately just was like sweating from every pore. But then now literally from that day on, every time I'm in a studio or like even on stage, I yeah. always look like three times yeah. to like make sure where I'm stepping is okay. 100%. Oh yeah. I've unplugged yeah. guitars during a show before. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> I Multiple? did that once. Yep. Nice. Um, <laughs> I was, uh, just well, one leg swoop just across. One just guitar, I think two different times. So <laughs> and it was the same <laughs> one too. <laughs> uh, Yo, so I feel like maybe you guys can relate on this, but when you're working with an artist for so long, it's kind of like you're investing in somebody. Like you're investing a lot of time and you're you're not really relying on them, but they're hoping these people will obviously grow and you can grow with them and They'll take you places like, for example, Ed's example, you know, has been with the same artist for five years and they've grown consistently over that time and taken taken his career to places that, you know, he wants to go and is thankful for. I'm sure other people can say that as well. When you start working with a team, like, I don't know who's watching this and they know, but not only are they working with the artists, but they're working with the management and the label and the touring crew. When you start working with a team, what are your signposts or the things you look for that represent like a healthy long-term relationship how do you identify those things for maybe people who have never been in this position before having just trouble deciphering over wow this is something i should really follow through with uh, if that makes sense i mean i can I, kind of think like before like the the whole idea of if you yourself the photographer are a good hang for the other 23 hours that the band isn't on stage like that applies both ways like I've been so fortunate that everyone I've worked with, whether it's like a long-term thing, like with Switchfoot or Foster or Stapleton or any other band I've done mm -hmm. um, in between, like I just, everyone's just like good people. And like, that makes, it makes me want to go back and, and work for them too. And like follow up and check next time they're coming through to like, see if they want to work together again. It, it goes both ways. So I think it's just kind of find, finding the people that you 
like resonate with and are just like good people that you know are just like excited to make stuff and excited yeah. to to make things that you get excited about photographing mm -hmm. yeah i think another thing as well just to go alongside that is the people that the artists surround themselves with like maybe the management that might mm -hmm. be if you have an idea for a project or that maybe you're bringing to them and it might be that there's a go-to person in the structure of the band's management that you're supposed to talk to so there's two different types of artists when that comes to you have with some artists and thankfully all the artists i currently work with fall into this category is that that person who is someone who is not only concerned about the money but is also concerned about the creative output and knows that there's a balance and that sometimes it's worth paying a bit extra even if financially it might not make sense right now but it might be for artistic integrity wise it's worth it down the line mm -hmm. and the other type of artist is one where the people the person your your proxy for those business conversations is someone who is only concerned about oh we can't pay that amount for a hotel like 250 dollars mm. for a hotel that night there's nowhere for less than 100 therefore we're not going to make this amazing piece of content you know so it's that is a and that for me tells me whether or not if those people that are around them facilitate me having a good both a good business and personal relationship because if i can't have a good business relationship with the business people it's going to be hard to have a good personal relationship with the band because they're going to wonder why certain things aren't happening mm -hmm. and they may blame you rather than the person who's their uh, their business interface wow mm -hmm. that's huge mm -hmm. well you broke that down yeah. really well and ed i don't know mm -hmm. if you wanted to say something at the beginning there i know that everybody's but if you want to go uh we were, we were talking about investing weren't we um yeah it's, <laughs> it's quite hard if you invest in uh one artist as well because they're only going to have one schedule and they're not going to do a lot of stuff in between so you're probably going to have a lot of downtime and actually uh you're not going to get paid in between in that downtime really not bands are not going to pay you to have three or four months off in a year if that's what their schedule is looking like so you're going to have to find other stuff to do in the meantime so you know that becomes another hard thing whereas like especially for me in London, a lot of people here are very last minute. The work is all like a week or two, um, like maybe maybe a month at most mm -hmm. um, outside of touring. So like if you get hit up for a job and you're not available, they're just going to go to someone else and then you've probably lost that contact next time. Yeah. You need it. So you're always like chasing this, like what is next or can I try and reignite that flame? And that becomes like quite hard for like someone to have the balance or at least like I found in my personal experience that I just have to accept time off as time off and try and utilize that to like push my own uh, brand or identity or website and uh, or prints or whatever, you know, it's like I have to use that time well, which I, I struggle with that. But I think like that's one of the things if you invest that much time in one band, you're going to have this time off, which mm -hmm. you may feel I've tried to fill it with touring with other artists, but Again, the same thing happens. You can't do a whole tour because you're about to go out with someone else. All the tour cycles clash. It becomes uh, comes tricky to balance. Juggling. And that, the, balance the balance and juggling is honestly the worst bit. And if you don't have someone to help you with it, which if you're self-employed, you won't, then it becomes like a big task because you have like emotional strength pulling you wanting to work with different artists. And, um, you know, you want to further your career, but you also want to like don't let down the people who have... Uh, you know, allowed you to do so much work for them and you want to keep working with them. So you're, you're, you're always torn, I find, between work. Well said. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <clears throat> I, like, I like hearing everybody's kind of different take on, mm -hmm. on that area, but it's, it's, it's very similar at the same time. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think, um, like, I mean, very, like, related to uh, both Peter and Ed's, uh, like, I guess, takes on it. When you're working with a band long term and whenever you like, I guess, uh, more consistently work with one artist, I mean, every part of it becomes an investment. I mean, it's like investing or like putting like uh, like in I guess like kind of like in stocks where it's like I'm putting all of this on red or I'm putting all of this on this one right here. And I'm hoping that it hits big or whatnot, because when you're working with I mean, yeah, your time off is time off between their tours, between the times that they have press runs and the times that they are, you know, in the studio and things like that. And kind of like with Peter, with, with what Peter said, it's like, if they're not uh, like in the earlier stages, if they're not willing to like assist with like a hotel or, you know, assist with like certain, like, I don't know, like per diems or things, 
like so the smaller things, you're investing not only your time, you know, being out on the road, not only like your energy working for the artist, but also like financially, spiritually, everything like that in the hopes that it's like, hey, I'm giving you this much time because it's a two way street here. So I'm hoping that when opportunities do arise, when things start working out a little bit better, then they will come back to you for that job opportunity or, you know, for this tour, or if they have friends, it's like, hey, we have this big gig coming up. Like, oh yeah, you got to talk to my friend over here. She does great work and all this. I mean, it's uh, you when you're working with one artist in particular, I mean, every part of it becomes becomes that investment emotionally, spiritually, physically, all of all of that. So I think, uh, yeah, I think a lot of people feel <laughs> similarly in, in that regard. We brought the spirit into yeah. this. Us and Oregon, mm -hmm. Oregon deep. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it, it's a big one. Yeah. Yeah, it, it helps if you really believe in the client. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, not that you would work with anybody that you don't believe in, but there's definitely some clients that maybe you feel more inspired by or you mm -hmm. like really have a vision for the direction mm -hmm. that they're going in. And that's always going to pull you back to keep working with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100 percent. Yeah. And I think Adam actually asked a question. It was like the question before this one, I'm trying to remember the specifics of it, but kind of like with what Anna's saying, having to believe in the artist. Um, a lot of it is just, would you be doing this even like, you know, let's say you had all the money. It's kind of like, you know, you had all the money in the world and you just wanted to do whatever you wanted to do. And if, you know, finances weren't a factor for me, it's like, I would still want to go on tour with, uh, with, you know, this band or these guys or my friends or, you know, whoever, because I do have a great time doing it. It's just, it so happens that, you know, that isn't the case where I have just like infinite source of income. So it's like, well, I have to make sure that if I want to keep doing this and if y'all want me to keep contributing, then we need, you know, to make sure that things are taken care of. And if you don't have that first part of like your intentions of wanting to be a part of this world and wanting to be a part of that lifestyle, then, I mean, everything else isn't going to, isn't going to end up working out anyway, whether it's financial or anything else. So, um, yeah, it, it's all very, very much of an investment. And anyone that's looking to get started in this world has has to understand that it does take a lot up front in order for you to get any anything uh, in return. And that could be taken in like, you know, financially, respect, uh, spiritually, anything like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I mean, we, like we all get into doing this because, I mean, I would think we all love music. We all love shows. We all love yeah. taking photos. And so it's like, I remember like all the first few things, like that first Switchfoot show, like I was shooting for my school paper because I loved shooting shows and I, I had this opportunity and I really liked the band. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go shoot it. Like, I was so excited to do it because I like just love it. Mm -hmm. And so then like, even now, like doing this, like as my job, like there'll be like random shows, like come through town and I'll get like so pumped to like hit people up. Like, oh, I wanna go shoot that show. Like there's or, like even shows that I've gone to, like just if me and my wife go to a show Sometimes I'll be there and I'll just be like, man, I wish I had a camera right now. Just because I was like, yeah. this is so cool. Like, I want to shoot. So I'm like, that makes me feel like, okay, I think I'm doing the right thing for my job. So because I get excited, like even when mm -hmm. I'm at a thing where I'm not shooting, I'm like, man, I wish I was shooting right now. This would be so <laughs> fun. So, yeah. It feels so foreign to go and not shoot, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's bizarre. How long did it to pay for a ticket? Yeah. <laughs> How long did it take <laughs> yeah. you guys to be able to go to a show and be like, it's okay. I'm not shooting. Stop thinking about the lighting. Just enjoy the show. Like, can you guys? That's not gonna. That's it's not, not gonna happening. Happen. Can't do it. Oh, no. Never happened. I mean, it hasn't happened yet. I always yet. bring. I, I have like a little like point and shoot, even if it's just like like I have like a little thing like that. Or, like, iPhone. Like yeah. something. I'm just always. I have to bring something. I'm like sitting yeah, in a corner with my iPhone, like slowly decreasing contrast. Like I know this will work yeah. eventually. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Was that film? Net? <laughs> What'd you say, Peter? Sorry. I would just say uh, carry, carry a little camera, carry like a pocket point and shoot, like yeah. a little. Yeah, I'm actually gonna even take a right now. That's wow. it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Yo, I got, I got so not. I just I should have thought better, but I had to shoot a concert earlier this year with an iPhone because they weren't letting cameras in, and then I saw somebody <laughs> and they had a point and shoot camera, 
that was like great quality and i was like of course security doesn't stop you for that these days why did i not yeah. just bring that like i should have mm-hmm, just yeah. brought yeah. <laughs> like their quality is arguably just as good as the dslr sometimes for certain mm-hmm. shots i should have just mm-hmm. brought it but i was like i don't know so good good advice ed and andy and you guys even had your camera within reaching range which i love well this this oh, is like my, one of my little film cameras but i have like a little fuji digital that i was i always call my fart around camera because i just like if i'm going to yeah. do something i just like always will try fart and carry around. it with me but it's like or even like for awards shows like i've used that like um at the grammys and stuff before too just because it's like they don't let anybody if it's it's they don't let anybody but that was it looks it's the little x100f and it looks like a film camera mm-hmm. people don't really bat an eye at it and it's just it's like kind of over my shoulder kind of hidden like i've got some great stuff with that just because yeah, I just, I wanted, I needed to work. And I was like, okay, I got to figure out how to figure this out. But yeah. Well, that's good good. tips. Yeah. yeah, we got, we got good tips. I have a dog I'm trying to get up here. Sass, come here. Come here. <laughs> oh, look at this pup. It's oh, that's a cute Aww. dog. It's a very nice Oh my pup. goodness. This oh, dog, like, I've only known it for a week. I'm staying at my uh, friend's place in Wisconsin. And it, it started, like, sleeping on my feet the other day. I was like, this is cool. Oh. I don't have a dog. <laughs> but, um, but some serious eyebrows. So dog deprived. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, yo, we're already at an hour. So I, that actually went probably the fastest I've ever had one of these goes. That was good. Good chats, guys. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Yeah. That was awesome. This mm-hmm. was chill. I'm going to let's, let's Connor, I, Connor, the mod left at the beginning but came back at the end and he's the guy with all the links connor do you still have everybody's portfolio because he'll throw it in the chat so that everybody can check it out but thank you guys for joining today awesome. if anybody didn't get to Thanks see this we'll throw it on youtube yeah thank you um now come back we do this every thursday if you guys just want to come hang we got good good stuff you're more than welcome to come come hang out and contribute via chat or we'll get you on the show again hey buddy and um oh. but, but yeah other than that i'm gonna stop the stream and uh cool. yeah Thanks everybody, for having everybody us. say bye to everybody Bye. Hey. Yeah, bye. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.